In the early days of the 1970s, a small group of monster computers came together to form what is now referred to as the Internet. Who were these cyber pioneers? Their peculiar style and strange communication techniques are now shaping the world forever. Individual computer enthusiasts, known as hackers and geeks, are leading what can only be called a techno-revolution. A handful of users grew to thousands, and now there are millions of them. The rest of us can only ask, how do we get online? The Internet is your gateway to a world of information. The purpose of this program is to provide you with the basic knowledge you need to begin your own journey along the information superhighway and to ensure that your trip is both fun and easy. In our program, you'll learn how to hook up to the Internet, how to send email, all about news groups and proper etiquette, how the Internet can be used in business, education and even health care, and we'll show you how real people have integrated this amazing technology into their daily lives. At the end of the program, we'll provide you with your own Internet address book filled with great sites you can visit right away. So relax and enjoy the ride as IBM, the world leader in computers and information technology, takes you on the trip of your life into the world of the Internet. Using the computer is easy. Taking full advantage of the Internet where do we start? But Dad... But Dad, let's just do it. Well, maybe I can try it. Dad... <laughs> well, I want to know about it, but what's but all the problem? Dad... Look, we're doing something here. I'll be right back. Jim, there is a voice call coming through. Jim, there is a voice call coming through. I am transferring your call now. Jim Carroll, Global Internet Consultant. How can I help you? Hi, Jim. I've got a real problem. Hey, Alan. What's up? We finally got our new computer and are ready to hook up to the Internet. But my parents aren't sure. They've got a lot of questions. You think you could come over and help us out? Sure. I love helping families get onto the Internet. Um, I've just got a few things i got to do around here. Then we'll be right over. Who else are you bringing over? Uh, the world. It, it sort of comes with the internet. I hope my mom won't mind. <laughs> She'll love it. Okay, thanks, Jim. Bye. I'll see you soon. There's a lot of people trying to get onto the internet. It's really not all that difficult, and that's why I'm here. So far, it's been a great morning. I've restructured the communication link to France. And I'm going to help the newbies get online. I absolutely love this job. Good Jim, to see you. I thought you'd never get here. They're really uptight. Hurry, come in. This is Jim Carroll, the internet guy I was telling you about. Jim, this is my family. That's my granny. Hi, do do? nice to meet you. That's Judy, the nerd. Oh. Hi, nice to meet another geek. That's my mom. Hi. Well, I hope you're half as good as Alan said you are. I'll try my best. And that's my dad. Hi. Thanks for coming. You're not going to try and sell us anything, are you? No, we'll do this as a bit of a personal favor. So you want to get hooked up to the internet? Let's go have a look. See, we know it would be great for the kids and all, but I don't think we can handle this thing. Oh, sure you can. It can be really easy. Let's go have a look at what some people have to say about the Internet. Well, the Internet is um, a way of getting information uh, down the line from a computer. It's like a computer thing, and you I can think... communicate with other things. Informative, that's all I can say. Well, it's like a big network all over the world, and anyone can get access. Isn't it a computer network that you can interact with other computers? Um, I don't know. I guess it'd have to do with computers or something. Trying to explain what the Internet is isn't easy. It really is different for each person that experiences it. For some, it's like a memo sender. For others, it's like a magazine rack or a library. And for others, it's an Ask the Expert system. The only way to really understand it is to get online and see what you can do with it yourself. Some people have said that the internet is so big and incomprehensible, it's the perfect model for life. We'll unravel some of the mystery. First thing we need is a computer. We got the best one you can get. Yeah, it's one of those multimedia, all-inclusive types. Nice choice. It's got everything we need. Modem, and software. We should be online in no time. Jim, exactly what does online mean? Yeah, and what's a modem? Well, we're online whenever we're using our computer to communicate with another computer. And when we've got two computers communicating, we call it a network. And the Internet is the biggest network of them all. They say that there's some 70,000 networks around the globe plugged together through this thing. Let's go in and understand a little bit more. 
Back in the late 60s and early 70s, ideas and people were really on the move. The United States was in a war, and the Defense Department's Advanced Research Projects Agency, or ARPA, needed faster and faster methods of communication. Because the big national research labs spread out across the country, a network was devised to speed up the transfer of important and sometimes classified information. Specialized computer software and hardware were developed to link the main computers via phone lines, radio waves, and signals emanating from Meridian satellites. This was the beginning of the Internet. Soon the Internet was developing its own culture, and a rapid explosion of growth occurred as computers around the world began hooking up. From a handful of users over 25 years ago, the Internet has grown so big that it is currently impossible to measure its size. Wow. Any other questions? Yeah, I'm still not sure about the modem. Well, the modem is the device in the computer that teaches the computer how to talk through the telephone network to hook up to the Internet. It does this by converting the, the bits and bytes of the computer into sound, much like we'd hear from a fax machine. The key thing about the modem is the speed. We call this the baud rate. The more baud you got, the faster you can use the Internet, the more information you can pull down through the Internet. This computer comes with a fast speed modem built right in. This means that if we're pulling down a lot of information from the Internet, or if we're paying to use the Internet, we can do it a lot quicker. Wait a minute, I thought the Internet was free. Well, the information that we go out and access is free, but we still need an Internet service provider to connect us into the network. A provider? What's that? Another piece of equipment? We'll worry about that later. Before accessing the Internet, you'll need the following. A computer. A modem. And remember, the higher the baud rate, the faster your computer will interact with the Internet. A phone line, either your existing telephone line or a dedicated line, and Internet navigating software, which is often available through your service provider. It's fun and informative. You are allowed to uh, interlink with any country, any company, uh, international, to the computer systems. Well, in fact, it is like having a million libraries of information at your fingertips. So whenever you need information, you can access it instantly. Basically, it saved us a thousand hours. Instead of going to the library and looking up all the information, which would have taken about a year, we got on the internet and it took us about 10 minutes. It's lots of fun. <laughs> I can talk to uh, my boyfriend in Boston, my friends you know, back in Waterloo and just around Canada. I would definitely be interested in getting involved in the internet. But my circumstances right now, with my wife having just left me and having the computer, I'm not able to get on it. The more you hear about it, you realize the Internet is becoming an everyday part of our lives. It's being used by a lot of people. It's being used by educators in college. It's being used by kids in day school. It's being used by university kids. It's being used by homemakers, ship captains, government leaders. One reason is because it works. Another reason, it's simply fun to use. So how do we get started? Well, let's start by turning on the computer. Okay, Jim, what do I do now? Judy can do this. How do I get to the internet from here? Well, we need to make contact with a provider. We need to give them a little bit of information, and then we can log on. In our case, we're going to use IBM's Global Advantage Network. John Smith from IBM will tell us how. Well, the provider is, uh, is really the connection from the individual's home uh, school, place of business, whatever it may be, to the Internet. And uh, so the service is, uh, is primarily a linkage from the modem, which is attached to your computer or maybe part of your computer, plugs into a telephone line. That telephone line, then through a local call, would connect you to a server that the uh, provider has established that then is attached to the Internet through another telecommunications uh, linkage. A first-time uh, user should look for a variety of, uh, of characteristics in a provider. Uh, particularly important for a first-time user is the uh, ease and uh, simplicity of access, if you like, in terms of getting signed up and registered uh, with that provider. The uh, uh, first-time user also wants to consider cost. Uh, that's important to all of us, and a, uh, a critical element of cost, in addition to the plans that the provider has that are well publicized, is are they straightforward? Uh, do you understand all of those costs? Are there any hidden costs? Look at the plans. How do those plans adapt to your needs? Do you, uh, if you're just starting out, you may be happy with something that only provides you two or three hours of access per month. I think also that a, uh, a first-time uh, user uh, wants to, uh, to consider the uses that they're going to make of the net. Uh, would they be communicating with a, uh, a son or daughter uh, off at college, for example? And uh, would they be traveling on business? If they're uh, a lifestyle of that nature, 
having a provider that has uh, uh, servers in more than one location uh, is going to be important. Shell account is, uh, is a, uh, a limited access to the internet. Um, it may be uh, less expensive, although not always so, um, but it will certainly only provide you access to some of the internet uh, capabilities. A slip account is a direct connection to the internet. Uh, so it takes your computer at, uh, at home or your place of business and, uh, and while you're logged on, has you directly connected to the internet. I think it's a combination of a variety of capabilities that it makes Advantis unique uh, as an internet uh, uh, service provider. Uh, we have a global network uh, that provides access uh, to, uh, to our customers on a worldwide basis. So people who travel uh, from one city to another city uh, can use the same ID and the same local calls uh, to access the internet. We have a capability to uh, provide technical support and assistance on a 24-hour uh, a day, seven day a week basis. We provide a variety of, uh, of plans that allow the consumer at home and business uh, users, uh, business professional users, uh, to make uh, wide range uh, use of the network uh, for a reasonable amount. Uh, we have a policy of, uh, of ensuring that our customers uh, get access to the internet when they want it. So uh, when a uh, a server is approaching capacity will increase the, uh, the number of nodes in that uh, server so that users don't experience the frustration of a busy signal when they're trying to get onto the net. And so the provider is really um, making available to you some computer hardware, some computer software, uh, telecommunications linkages, and skilled people uh, that can ensure that uh, your experience on the net is a, uh, is a fun and exciting event, uh, that you have something that's simple and easy to use. When looking for a service provider, remember these important tips. Is the service easy to hook up to? Do their hookup plans adapt to your needs? Do they provide comprehensive payment options and competitive hourly and monthly rates? Are there servers in more than one location with local call access? Do they ensure that you won't get a busy signal when dialing in? Does the provider have a reputation for a slow server, system crashes, and unreliability? How often are they down for maintenance? Is there 24-hour technical support? Is easy-to-use interface software provided to make navigating around the net both fun and easy? Okay, I think we're ready to get an account. I thought we were ready before you got here. Ooh, this is exciting. Advantis provides the simplest method for setting up an internet account, and it can be done right from your computer. Open the Information Superhighway window on your main screen. Click on the IBM Internet Dialer icon and you'll be asked to register with Advantis. Select the Register button and then select Open a Personal Account. Once you've read the terms and conditions, you're ready to key in all the necessary account owner information. What you want to do is you want to type in your first name there and we've got to put in your last name there address. Pretty good typist. We need your city right here. And location. And oh, by the way, we need your uh, credit card number. I knew we were going to get to that sooner or later. It's the fastest way to get online. Your credit card type you choose right up there. And putting your credit card number there. We've got to have the expiry date. And finally, we click on OK. Here we go. In a couple of minutes, we'll be all set up, ready to go. Wow, this is cool. I want to send an email letter to my Aunt Hilda. Sure, no problem. Oh, how do we do it? Well, the best way to describe email is just simply to send one. Well, the first thing we need to understand is your email address. Your setup is familynewbie at advantisibm.us. Now, that sounds a little funny, but it'll make sense over time. With a provider like Advantis, you can have up to six usernames on this one computer. They're called user IDs, and that way you can have one for each member of the family. Having separate ones for everybody is a good idea. That way you can have your own electronic mail. It's very easy to do. You'll be able to set that up later. But for now, we're going to use your real family name. You could use anything, a company, a nickname, first name, last name, just initials. It doesn't matter. That small letter A with the circle around it means at. So far, your name is family newbie at. Now it gets interesting. That abbreviated name is the name Advantis, your internet service provider. They're part of the IBM organization, so their name is there too. 
The last few letters in the end indicate the domain or the country that the organization belongs to. It's called dot .us for obviously United States. If we put it all together, each of these pieces of information are separated by a simple period or a dot. So you would read your internet address as newbiefamily at advantis.ibm.us. What this really means is newbiefamily at the provider Advantis, the supplier IBM, in the United States. It seems a little weird and geeky. Just treat it like a phone number or a fax number. You'll get used to it. and Don't worry too much about what the symbols mean. It's easy to send email with the IBM Internet software provided. First, select New Letter in the Ultimail folder. And what you want to do is type in her address in this box up here. Crazylegs.com What's dot .com? That means she's part of a business network. Oh, well, she runs a dance studio. And just in case you should ever cross, come across any of these, dot .edu means they're part of an educational institution and uh, gov means they're part of the government. All right, now you can type your message to Aunt Hilda. Okay. Hello, Hilda. Here's my message I promised to send you. How is Sam Cooper doing these days? And try Newbie's Taffy. What's uh, Newbie's Taffy? That's Grandpa Newbie's favorite recipe. Ah, okay. Love uh, Ma. We click on send. And away it goes. It's gone. Wow. Sending email is just the beginning. We can reach some 60 to 70 million people these ways. And there's more. There's something on the internet we call news groups. So what's a news group? A news group is like a community. Or you could say a community is a news group. It's a place on the internet where people share information. They trade ideas. They debate topics. They argue about things. What is a community? Well, that's part of the spirit of the internet. People like to be online. They like to share information. They use it for advice. They use it to discuss topics. It's sort of the unique spirit that we see out there on the internet. My name's John Adams, and I've been very lucky to host a radio show called RadioNet, broadcast out of Santa Cruz, California. It's nationally syndicated, globally rebroadcast on the Armed Forces Radio Network, and also it's rebroadcast using the Internet. When you describe the Internet as a community, it, it truly is a new form of community. It's not community as, as something that we are familiar with right now. It's a community that's infinite in size and yet immediately accessible. That's what's so incredible about it, is you can go anywhere in the world. You can go from the Library of Congress to the Louvre in the snap of a finger. The community right now, when we think of, you drive down the street, or you make a long-distance phone call, or you walk to your neighbor, that doesn't happen on the Internet. It's all local, it's all free, and it's all immediately accessible. So it's redefining the boundaries and the definition of community. What is a news group? Think of a news group as an area where people can gather who have a common interest. So if your common interest is, let's say, underwater basket weaving, and you can't find anyone in town who likes underwater basket weaving, you can go to that news group on the internet, and I think it does exist. And you can meet people there who have that common interest. So you can talk about different ways to basket weave underwater with people who want to talk about that. It covers so many different topics. There are so many different things that anyone in your family, anyone, can find something to talk about on a news group, and that news group is going to be there. Again, 8,000 different subjects are covered. It's phenomenal what you can find. One of my favorite stories is about a lady by the name of Roberta, <clears throat> and Roberta was a fan of mine at the radio station, the news talk station where I work, and she listened to RadioNet for a while just because she would call me during the week and tell me about the show. Finally, we got Roberta to the point where she was so interested in what we were talking about, she went out and bought a computer and she got on the internet. The incredible thing about Roberta is that she's 81 years old. She's 81 years old and she'd never had a computer before. She, I mean, her VCR just flashed 12. She was totally technophobic and we walked her through the process we got her into cyberspace, and now she's on the internet every day. She has friends all over the world. She sends me email, she shares stories with me, and she's seen and experienced things she never would have had a chance to. She'd never seen the Mona Lisa. She'd never been to the Louvre. She went through cyberspace. Once you've been on the internet for a while, you'll have your own personal story to tell. Do you? Yeah, there's been a few times when I've had problems with my kids, and I've used the internet to get sort of a second medical opinion. There's places on the internet where parents share ideas, they trade information. 
exchange ideas on what it's like to try and raise kids. It's been a really useful resource that way. Wow, that's great. Uh, Jim, do you want a drink in the kitchen? No, I'm fine, thanks. Jim, I could use a hand with the drinks in the kitchen. Oh, okay. No problem. So, Jim, will you have a glass of water? Sure. Oh, and you have to try some of Grandpa Newby's famous taffy. There you go. Mm, that's good. Look, the real reason I asked you in here was to ask you some questions about this internet thing. What if I wanted to talk to other parents about, let's say, common situations with teenagers? Could I do that? Sure, 24 hours a day if you like. The place I was talking about just doesn't talk about babies. All kinds of parents are talking about all kinds of issues raising kids. In my own case, it's given me tremendous insight into raising my own kids. Oh, so the discussions can get that involved? Oh, well, they get really involved. There's usually somebody always there who's willing to trade information. It's really sort of a sense of community that's out there. My name is Arlette Lefebvre. I'm a child psychiatrist here on staff at the Hospital for Sick Children, and I'm also co-founder of Ability Online, which is a telecommunication network that links kids to the Internet. I didn't know it was called the Internet back then, but in the fall of 89, I bought a new computer, uh, a bigger IBM. I'd had a PC Junior, and it became out of date. And a modem came with it. I had no idea what it was for. And a friend said, here, log on to this system or that. You'll find a lot of health information. Then, I guess after two, three months of being online, I'd met several very interesting people. And two of these individuals who were well-respected, who were moderators of conferences, one said, do you realize I'm blind? And the other one said, do you realize I'm in a wheelchair? And that was really the aha moment, because for the first time I realized the tremendous power of this medium to be the great equalizer, that it doesn't matter what you look like, it doesn't matter how you speak, all that matters is what you say, you're judged for what you say, not how you say it. Ability Online, if you like, is a friendly little pothole on the superhighway. And the idea is that with a computer and a modem, any child from any hospital bed or school or home, even critically ill, can keep in touch with his classmates. But also to put children who are going through traumatic experiences in touch with mentors, with coaches, with role models who've been there. Uh, Farzana is a wonderful teen who happens to have a chronic condition called lupus, which is an autoimmune disorder which can affect every part of your body. Um, and she became very yeah, ill in the fall of 91. Well, before I was on the internet, I lost a lot of my friends because I was just diagnosed. And I didn't have too many friends, and I wasn't, I was in hospital a lot, and I wasn't linked to the world very greatly. But when I got introduced to the internet, I made a lot of friends. My depression went away, and I had something to do while I was here. The best thing is that people don't know what you look like, they just know how you are inside. Harry is a young girl who's only recently been introduced to Ability Online. She also has a, a chronic illness that has been very acute in the last few weeks. She spent a lot of time in ICU. But she's an author and has written wonderful poems uh, how it's difficult to live with her condition. What's interesting about Carrie is that her poem was published through the internet. She sent it to the editor of Ability Network through Ability Online, and it was published without ever going through the post office. I think if there's one thing I've learned in the last 20 years, and I've learned more from the wonderful families I work with than from any textbook, it's not the disability that matters in life. It's not fixing every pathology. And unfortunately, medicine is very pathology-focused. It's finding your ability, building on your ability, and learning how to communicate your ability. Saint-Exupéry, who's a French writer, once wrote, the important is invisible to the eyes. It's what you see with the heart that counts. I like to think of the internet as a shortcut to the heart. That's remarkable. Having the internet around is going to be very useful. Jim, how do you keep up with all this stuff? There are so many sites. It's true, there's all kinds of information out on the internet. Aside from the part we've seen communicating with electronic mail, there's three ways we might communicate with people around the world. 
we see here right now, they're called news groups. Thousands and thousands of topics, people trading information on all kinds of ideas and issues. Uh, they're doing this over a period of hours or days. It doesn't really happen immediately. Then there's what we call electronic mailing lists. They're a little bit different. You subscribe to them like you subscribe to a magazine. You receive the information on that topic in your electronic mailbox on a regular basis. And then there's what we call IRC, or Internet Relay Chat. It's really different with thousands of topics, but what we type in happens in real time. So as I'm typing, they're reading? Exactly. What we see on the screen appears immediately on another computer, everywhere else in the world. Let's say we're looking for a topic. Let's say we're trying to find information about, let's say, kids. What I do is I click on this box here and type in that I'm searching for information about kids. And there's a list of news groups about kids, places where people are talking about kids' issues. Some of them are what we call chat lines. Is it always that easy? No, sometimes it gets a little bit more difficult. You can't really find the topic. You have to dream up terms that sort of match what you're looking for. Like, if I wanted to find out all the latest developments in database programming and nothing came up, I would try again, say, with programming and then browse from there? Yeah, exactly. Honey, move over. Let me try it. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of news groups available on the Internet. In order to find the topic you want, it will be important to narrow down your search. News groups have multi-part names separated by a period. The first part of the name refers to the general news group category. The second part narrows down the topic, and the third part is the topic itself. In this example, SCI is the news group category related to a science. GEO specifies geology, and earthquakes is the specific topic of interest. There are many news group categories available on the Internet. Some of the more common ones include News, topics relating to Internet news, REC, recreational topics such as hobbies, sports, and the arts, SOC, social topics relating to social interests, SCI, science-related topics, COMP, topics relating to computers, One a.m. curfew. Where did you drop in from? The Middle Ages? Ah, Jim, what's going on here? Oh, you've been flamed. It's it's a term the internet uses to describe you know when people react really negatively to something you've typed. If you let them, they'd go on and on and on. And really, what's happening is just as you know we have acceptable rules of behavior in real life, the internet has its own its own rules of etiquette. They're called netiquette. They're really just based on common sense. It's very easy when you don't know the rules in an environment to offend someone. And you don't want to offend someone on the internet. It's a very powerful area and there are people that take that and take advantage of that power and offend other people. And there are things that you can do in cyberspace that you wouldn't consider offensive in our world and yet are horribly offensive in cyberspace. One quick little rule, never write your email messages in all caps. There's no way to yell in cyberspace. Yelling in cyberspace is achieved by typing in all capital letters. And someone who's on the internet on a daily basis is very sensitive to this case change. So if you as a newcomer to the internet go out and send someone an email message, three or four sentences long in all caps, you're going to horribly offend them and you'll probably never get a response. So there are definite things that you need to take into consideration the best way to learn about netiquette is to step back, take it slowly, and just observe in the beginning. The first time I worked on the internet, it felt like, wow, I'm transferring information to other people in the world. And this is really great. Netiquette is how to handle yourself on the internet. You can show emotion by making smileys. You can make all sorts of smileys like Sad smileys, winking smileys, happy smileys. Smileys are keyboard combinations that allow you to express emotion on the internet in a simplified manner. Here are a few examples. A colon followed by a dash and a right bracket signifies a happy face. And when used at the end of a sentence or article, informs the reader that this is meant to be funny. A colon followed by a dash and a left bracket signifies an unhappy face and means that the comment makes me sad. 
and a colon followed by a dash and the letter O signifies that the submitter is shocked. There are smiley combinations to signify virtually any expression imaginable. See if you can figure out these ones. This signifies that the submitter has a wry sense of humor. This signifies that the submitter is wearing glasses. And a colon followed by an at sign means look out because the submitter is yelling at you. What you shouldn't do on the internet is flame people. And flaming is when you write a message or hundreds of messages to a certain person that have rude things in them. Another thing that you shouldn't do is send too many messages to them because they get ticked off and they can flame you back a message and it's like a circle. You send the messages, they flame you and it just keeps going. The last thing you should not do is to write a person a lot of messages asking the same question and they ignore you because it does not make you look very good on your first time on the internet. Remember these rules of netiquette. Never type in all capital letters. This means that you are yelling. Instead, use smileys to express emotion. Never be rude or use bad language. If you don't get a response to a question, don't continue to ask. This can be very annoying. Connection made! Yes! Every show, my favorite, Bart becomes mayor. I think he's made a friend out in cyberspace. This kid wants to know our phone number. Should I give him our internet address or our real phone number? Jim, I'm not sure. Alan, when you're out in the street, you take special care of dealing with strangers, right? Of course. Well, it's no different on the internet. Law enforcement officials, educators, child care specialists, they're coming up with guidance to help parents understand the realities of cyberspace. There's been a great deal of discussion lately about um, censorship in the internet. The very basis and foundation of the internet is free communication and heaven knows that's terribly important that people have the freedom to express themselves uh, and to be heard. By the same token, um, I think for young children to be exposed to information and to language uh, from adults and from people who may be angry or who may have their own cause uh, to, to uh, pound the pavement with may not be the best thing and in their best interest. So in the same way uh, that a parent has to monitor what a child watches on television and use some judgment on which programs to expose their child to. I think in the same way parents have a role to play in deciding uh, what part of the internet is appropriate for their child. Security and safe proofing of the internet is of growing concern to families. Always remember that the internet is an open window to the world. Be cautious when giving out any personal information. Children should remember never to give out their home address or telephone number or agree to meet anyone in person without consulting a parent first. Get out of here. No way. Oh, where do they get this stuff? I can't believe the news on this thing. I glanced at one article that said movie stars are constantly logging in to observe the inner thoughts of their fans. With millions and millions of people out on the internet, you never know who's going to be out there. Do you know anybody rich and famous on it? Aside from myself? No, seriously. Let's go online and we'll have a look. Let's go surfing. Surfing? Cool. There are thousands of interesting and informative sites to visit on the internet, and each day hundreds of new ones are added. If you spent 24 hours a day online for the rest of your life, you wouldn't be able to see everything that's out there. Many of these sites have great graphics and they even play sound and video. It's important not to get overwhelmed with all the information. Just make a list of the addresses for the sites that interest you the most. At the end of the program, we'll provide you with your own internet address book with a list of lots of great sites that you can visit right around the world. That was fun. I'll get it. With everything that's available, it's hard to believe that the internet Hello? is so new. Yeah, mm -hmm. hang on a sec. Dad, it's someone from the bank. Hi. Yeah, it's just on my desk. Okay, I'll be in first thing.
Sorry about that. Now, where were we? I got an idea. Do you want to see how the internet could help you manage a business from home? Yeah, I have been thinking about a home business. Perfect idea. Grandpa Newbie's taffy. You can sell it through the internet. I think there's a real idea there. I think it'll work. Yeah, but the marketing and packaging would just be too expensive. Now, at my work, I know there's tons of information available on the internet, but we're not completely hooked up yet. What is it that you do? I'm a financial advisor. I need all the latest information on the trends, markets, and complete financial services. Ah, the internet was made for you. Let's go in and have a look. Getting information about your bank accounts, uh, buying goods over the, over, the, uh, over the telephone, mail order, that sort of thing, really. Well, it's a fantastic tool. I mean, I'm in sales, and the amazing thing about the Internet is it keeps me right in contact with all the people that I need to be in contact with. I can easily service my old clients. I can find new clients. It's, uh, I can keep in touch with my office. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal tool. What I use the Internet for right now is uh, accumulating information on my stock market portfolio and gathering information at various worldwide websites. Um, I use email once in a while to talk to friends in other countries and it's just an incredible way to gather information. Using the Internet has completely changed my business. Um, I used to deal with a small local area. Um, I set up an email address and now I deal with places like Pakistan, Tel Aviv. It's great. I, you know, I put out orders all over the place. Incredible. It's hard to believe that it's had that much of an effect on business at all levels. Well, really what's happening, the internet is becoming the marketing place for the 90s. My name's Mark Fox and I'm president of Fox Novator Systems and we build interactive information kiosks for the World Wide Web. There are many different categories or types of businesses on the internet today. One of our uh, early customers is the Isaacs Inuit Gallery in Toronto, and they specialize in Inuit art, Eskimo art. And what we did for them was, in essence, to create a gallery online via the World Wide Web, where people can browse all the different types of art that they have available uh, through the gallery, and they can purchase it. So in essence, the goal of the Isaacs Inuit Gallery on the World Wide Web is to provide a complete environment in which you can not only peruse or browse through the art, but you can develop a deeper understanding of what Inuit art is and what the unique characteristics are from uh, different parts of Canada. What's interesting about the internet today is anything that you can imagine that can be sold can be found out there. The business opportunities on the net are varied. Uh, it could be as simple as providing a marketing outlet where a company will provide information about themselves, the full color catalog, which by the way you can't do via an 800 number, but by accessing the catalog on the web you can see all the arrangements in full color and you can order it 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For me the future of business on the internet uh, is distinguished by whether we're referring to the consumer or to commercial business. On the consumer side, uh, what we're going to see with the advent of increased access to the internet, we're going to see the ability for people to access information, products and services from their home whenever they want to do it. What the revolution is, is the ability to follow your whim, the ability to ask a question and actually find an answer the ability to uh, open up your interests, to play to your curiosity, to not have your curiosity stifled. There are many advantages to doing business on the net. The internet provides 24-hour access to the worldwide marketplace. You can find and educate customers, obtain customer feedback and build mailing lists, conduct up-to-the-minute market research, improve public relations, buy and sell products. If you would like to find out more about how your business can benefit from the Internet, simply call your local IBM Advantis representative. Okay, hey, cool. So now that you've seen the power of the Internet, do you think there's something worthwhile for you in here? Well, our school's been thinking about getting the Internet, but I'm not sure exactly how they're going to use it. Let's take a class project you're working on, some research you have to perform. Well, I'm doing a big map of the solar system. Oh, that's an easy one. Let's go off to NASA. From the main Internet Connection screen, choose World Wide Web Search Tools. From here, select the web crawler to narrow down your search. 
Type in the topic and click on Search. Now you are searching the entire Internet for anything that meets your criteria. Select something more specific to your topic. And there it is. Click on this button. Wait a moment for it to come down. Take a look at that stuff. Oh, cool. Everything I need is right here. Jim, how can I get this stuff printed out? That's quite easy. Go to the File menu, select Print. This is where you select your printer. Click on OK and you've got a hard copy. And as well, if you want to, you can save it to your computer so you can print it anytime. Really what this is all about is the exchange of information. Okay, great. Hey, it's my turn. <laughs> so come on. The Internet is revolutionizing the education system. Entire schools are coming online. It's no wonder. Books are outdated as soon as they're printed. Through the Internet, students can access research experts around the globe, professionals, scientists. And in some cases, it's the students providing information to the expert. Uh, my name is uh, Tom Stiff. I'm a computer consultant for secondary schools, and I'm with the Simcoe County Board of Education. Um, we have just in the past year embarked on a project to utilize the Internet as uh, an educational tool in which we're tracking a number of explorers as they move across the North Pole. The way we integrated the Arctic project with the school curriculum was on two fronts. One is we had a team of teachers write an activity guide that would relate curriculum activities to things that were going on in the Arctic project. The second way was that we had the Arctic explorers themselves contact our students on a day-to-day -day basis describing their travel, what they saw, environmental conditions, anecdotal information about life in the Arctic. And these two things were made together, the activities and the information from the expedition team, all via internet. And that information was presented each day to all the classes and all the schools within our county. One of the things that makes our county unique, we think, is that not only do we have internet, but we have satellite tracking systems at every secondary school. It allows us to download every day, literally hour by hour, all the environmental information transmitted by the environmental satellites as they pass overhead. And that's led to two projects. One of the most interesting was a project we've undertaken with students at a high school in Manitoba on the shore of Hudson's Bay. We're monitoring the migration of beluga whales and correlating it to the breakup of the sea ice in Hudson's Bay. And that's uh, very interesting and certainly an unexpected use of internet, but turned out to be remarkably successful. One of the key values of internet as an educational tool is its dynamic nature. And we can buy CD-ROMs and pay a huge amount of money for them for databases in a year, or especially even in two years, the way times things are changing, they become obsolete. With internet, you can get that stuff literally on an up-to-the-minute basis. The other, of course, is the ability to reach the sources of that information directly without having it come to you second or third hand. A very simple example, it's easy for our students to talk to students in Germany, let's say, and understand what's going on there politically from their point of view, rather than reading about it or having it filtered by half a dozen teachers, textbook writers, and media resources along the way. Uh, the best thing about it is probably having all the information that's updated at your fingertips. So you don't have to read all kinds of newspapers and all kinds of books. You can just go to a subject and all the information's there. You can look at whatever you're interested in. You can find out about people and music and animals. You can look at different educations at universities and jobs. And it's really good. You can just look at whatever you want to. Students at the same time are also very highly motivated by what they find and their ability to explore. And they're less uh, directed and I think they have a feeling of more independence as a student. Everybody talks about being educated and everything and it is that too but it, I think it's more fun for me and um, it's really easy because a lot of people you say the word computers and they get scared but this one's really, this program's really easy. It's just like the windows. You just go into it and you click on the blue or red and it takes you into all these neat places and it's really easy to access. It's in a sense it's like showing somebody who's never seen a library before what's in a library. The advantage of this is that instead of having to go somewhere to do it, it all comes to them and that makes it much more versatile. And of course, because of its very nature, it's infinitely larger than, than practically any library you can imagine. The biggest impact I would say the internet has is that for the first time I've seen highly motivated teachers who are excited about what's there. And there's no doubt in my mind that a highly motivated teacher, regardless of the circumstances, is the best thing we could ever deliver into the hands of the public education system. The Internet is an invaluable educational tool for both children and adults. It's an unlimited source for reference materials. It provides information on demand that is updated on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. Kids can meet electronic pen pals. Students can work on projects with other students around the world. 
It puts you in touch with experts around the world. Kids find it exciting and it makes them motivated and excited about learning. Well, it's obvious the newbies are getting enthusiastic about the internet. Once you get your family on the net, you'll share their enthusiasm. Just one last bit of advice. You're going to have to post a schedule. It's going to be a big demand for the computer. Bye, newbies. Bye, Jim. Bye, Jim. Bye. Guess I'm going to have to let myself out. You Jim Carroll, global internet consultant? Uh, yeah. Got a package here for you. Just sign here, please. Here you go. Here's a pen. Thank you very much. Thank you. I wonder what this is. Ah, <laughs> Grandpa Newbie's homemade top. Jim, thanks for your help and inspiration. We've received thousands of orders from internet users around the world. Grandpa Newbie must be very proud. Who would have thought, thanks again, the newbies. <laughs> now that you know everything you need to know about the internet, there's just one last thing to do. Might as well just dive right in. We've provided you with your own internet address book with a list of fun and exciting addresses for the whole family. In the program list, you'll find addresses for all the experts in our program. In our business listing, we've included a database for interesting business sites on the web, a list of newspaper services, Advertising Age magazine and Career Mosaic, which will help you to find out about careers. Our education listing includes the Environmental Education Network, Students for the Exploration and Development of Space, the Library of Congress, and Kids Web, a site just for kids. And our entertainment listing includes the Internet TV Resource Guide, the Looney Tunes site, so you can check up on all your favorite cartoon characters, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and if you want some real fun, check out the world of roller coasters. You can contact your local Adventist representative by using the toll-free number provided below.